So I'm running the Korg NTS-1 off of the T8, both with a MIDI connection first, MIDI out from the T8 and into the NTS-1, so that a start of the sequence on the T8 also starts the sequence on the NTS-1, and then a sync out from the T8 into the NTS-1 so that the clock stay in sync and the tempo is driven from the T8. And then of course, the two out audio outputs from both devices go to the mixer so I can hear both of them. Right now, you're only hearing the NTS-1. The oscillator is set to saw, and we can adjust that, change the shape of the saw, as well as the subharmonics with the second dial. And it uh, gives you a lot of options on each oscillator, but you'll see soon there are many oscillators to choose from. And there's a subharmonic change and the shape change. And with each combination of shape and subharmonics, you get a slightly different sound. Now we can start listening to the audio from the T8 to get a little bit of drums to make this a little less monotonous. And I can also go back and change the sequence on the NTS-1 one note at a time. So I just hold down the sequence button and then turn that first dial to get to the step I want to change and then input a new note. So you'll hear throughout the video how I'm changing the notes in the sequence and just one at a time changing some notes so that we don't bore ourselves to death with the same eight step sequence running the whole time. But I will say you can get quite a lot out of eight steps, particularly at a slow tempo and when you play with other instruments driven by MIDI, there's just so much you can do. Now if I hold the oscillator button, I can also choose which octave I want to input the note for. And so I'm going back to step seven and eight and changing it to a, a different octave. If I hold the sequence button, I can actually change the steps. I go back to step seven and change it. If I click the oscillator button, I can change what type of oscillator there that I'm using. So now I'm in the triangle shaped oscillator and changing the shape and again the subharmonics. And now I'm changing to the square oscillator and again the shape and the subharmonics. And now I'm in an FM oscillator, changing the node structure and the different FM ratios. What mode I'm changing. Sorry, the nodes of the FM oscillator. Now I'm changing the nodes and the ratio. Now I'm in the noise oscillator and the noise oscillator can get some melodic sounds, but mostly it's for noise and making some drum sounds. And then the wave shape oscillator. Again, plenty of shape options and subharmonics. Now, the filter has many options. There's two low pass, two band pass, two high pass, and a through. And you can change the cutoff and the resonance of the filter. If I hold the filter, it'll change the filter sweep, and I can make that slope up or slope down into the note, as well as the frequency or the rate of that sweep. Now you can see it's sloping up into the note or down from the note. Now I'm just playing around with my oscillator sounds. Now let's go into envelope. 
And Envelope has many different settings and types of envelopes, starting with ADSR. So I've got attack, decay, sustain, and release. I'm changing the attack and then I'm changing the release. There's a short release and a short attack. an attack release envelope and a looping envelope as well. And then there's an open envelope which is slightly loud. Now the mods that are available, there's chorus with different depth and time options, like all the mods have. There's ensemble. Now maybe we should change the sequence a bit again so we don't bore ourselves. So I go back and hold sequencer go back to the steps and just enter new notes for that sequence. And I'm just winging it here. Now I just transposed by mistake, which is easy to do. You just tap a note on the keyboard. But now we've got a new sequence. Let's go back to our, mod, our mods and from Ensemble, we also have Phaser, again with time and depth options. And there are often options when you hold one of the buttons. Phaser doesn't look like it has that. Then there's a flanger. The flanger sounds really nice. And you can play with the time and the depth to get some different sounds. There's a soft clip and a hard clip mod. Hard clip can give you some really harsh tones that can sound great in the right situation. Fuzz mod, which I think was added to the Mark II that was not on the first version of the NTS-1. And Fuzz also can sound really cool. So let's get into the other effects and start with delay. There are many options for the delay type, starting with stereo delay. And then we'll see later there's also a stereo BPM synced delay, which I really like to use. This is stereo unsynced, so it's not synced to the BPM. I'm just going to shorten the release a little bit on the envelope. So now we've got a shorter release and we can really hear the delay. The next one is a mono delay. So stereo then mono, and inside the delay you can change the time and the depth. There's a ping pong. some really nice effects changing the time parameter in real time. Let's change our sequence again. Holding down sequence, going back to the first note, and we'll just enter all eight notes of the sequence to see what we get. And let's go back to our delay. That's, we ended with ping pong. There's also a high pass delay. There's a tape delay. And again, all of these that we're seeing are not BPM synced. And I say that because we will hit the BPM synced set of delay options in a minute. There's a delay called one, which just gives you one repeat. It's like a single echo or a doubling. 
as it's called on some other devices. And now we've got the stereo BPM synced delay, which will always give me each increment of the time option will stay somewhat in sync in some ways with the BPM. And mono BPM synced and ping pong BPM synced, which I love, sounds amazing. Especially with a short time. High pass BPM synced. The tape delay BPM synced. So that's delay, I love it. I love the delays on this thing. Now let's go to the reverb. And you've got many options here. There's a whole reverb. And again, you can change the time and the depth of any of the reverbs. So that's Hall. Then there's Smooth. Just want to turn down my delay so it doesn't get in the way of hearing the reverb. Now the Arena del uh, reverb. This is the Arena option. Maybe we should change our sequence again. Let's go back to note one and give it another shot for some variation. And you can hear as the sequence changing as I'm pressing these notes, but still continuing to play. So it's an option to change this as you perform a track. Okay, we're in the arena delay. I mean, uh, arena reverb. Here's a plate reverb. And I really like the effects on this device. A room reverb, so different size of room by changing the time of the reverb. And now we're changing some of the sub options, which is some of the feedback options. And I think that's the wet dry as well. There's an early reverb. A space reverb, which is probably one of the strongest, really strong, powerful effect. space we've got a riser which I love to actually modify this in real time if I turn it up and then back down it gives me this rising background and then after riser there's something called subnatural <laughs> I call it subnarly and then something called horror a horror reverb which you can imagine is very cinematic growl to it. So that's the reverb options. Let's just adjust our oscillator sound a little bit. filter where we want it. Now the sequencer option, you've been hearing this whole time, we've been going back and forth. That's the next button in the row of buttons on this device. 
once we find a sound we like, we'll show you the ARP. The arpeggiator. And the way you latch it is you have to hold the ARP button and that will latch it. Otherwise, you just hold a key. But you can see I can latch it on by holding ARP. And I can also change how many octaves it will arpeggiate. Now it's latched. Turn down that reverb. I can also change the number of steps I get or sub steps. The timing 64th, 48th, 30 seconds, 24th, and 16th. I think I'll go to 30 seconds. And I can also change the pattern of the ARP. So the arpeggiator patterns, that's the number of octaves. And then the patterns are just all the typical patterns, stochastic, random. I forget what all of these things stand for as I'm running through them, but up and down and many options on the arpeggiator. So that's about it. Back to our sequence. Our eight steps.